At the age of nine, Cynthia Garrett was sexually abused. That single event overshadowed her life for years. Even when she achieved her childhood dream of becoming a TV host, Cynthia felt more like a victim than a victor. Television personality Cynthia Garrett experienced Hollywood fame, hosting the Grammys, Billboard Awards, Emmys, and the VMAs. But she truly made her mark, becoming the first woman of color to host a late night talk show on NBC. While living her dream, Cynthia was still tormented by her past. At only nine years old, she was sexually abused by a family member. At 16, she was raped. And her first marriage was filled with physical and emotional abuse, landing her in prison for a crime that she did not commit. In her book, I Choose Victory, Cynthia shares how God brought healing to her brokenness and gives practical steps on moving from being a victim to becoming a victor. Please welcome back to the 700 Club, Cynthia Garrett. Cynthia, it's nice to have you with us. Hi, Terry. Good morning. Good. It's nice to be with you again. Will you take us back, as difficult as I'm sure it is to revisit it, to that time when you were nine years old that caused you to develop a victim mentality? Yeah, you know, it. it my abuse in my home um, by my older half-brother probably started when I was around seven um, until I was about nine um, because it was repeated over the course of a couple of years, two, three years. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I think taking you back is, it, it's like a journey that I, I've gone on so many times going back to, well, why? You know, why did he choose to do this to me? He also did it to my younger sister, which I found out years later. So, you constantly, you know, are wrestling with what was wrong with me? Why didn't he love me? He was my big brother. He, you know, why, why me? You know, and, and the shame and the sort of low self-esteem that leaves you with, it, it starts there, you know? And, and uh, for me, I have always been a, a fighter, you know, a strong person. I, I've always been committed to kind of proving that the narrative in my mind you know, that constantly said, you're not worth anything. You know, I constantly had self-esteem struggles. Uh, my sort of goal was always, you know, to be successful, <laughs> overachieve. Yeah. You had a lot of dreams when you were a young girl of wanting to do the very things you're doing today. And you went through a rape as a teenager, then you got into a marriage that was very abusive. And yet, mm -hmm. that crisis led you to a personal relationship with Jesus. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, we've spoken about that. That was the subject of my first book, which is uh, called Prodigal Daughter, A Journey Home to Identity. And that's really my testimony. You know, in that book, I found that I was constantly pulling from these experiences uh, that occurred and these things that I went through because of my sexual abuse. And, you know, I, I mean, I think I, the textbook classic, of course, I ended up in an abusive first marriage, you know, in my 20s and as a young girl looking for love in all the wrong places and, you know, really uh, running off. I ran off kind of trying to get away from the pain inside of me um, to a foreign country, got married and ended up in prison and a star witness against this first husband of mine. Uh, that marriage lasted a couple of months and literally ended up on our honeymoon in jail. And that's where I met the Lord in so a, in a, a lot very of, big way. A lot of people would have gotten stuck right there because it was a history of this thing happened and then this thing happened and then this yeah. thing happened. And you know, you buy the lie and you start to identify yourself that way. And then you become the first woman of color to host a late night TV show. This was your dream. And yet, in the middle of the success you achieved, you still struggled with the victim mindset. How does that happen? Because I think what happens to anybody who has childhood brokenness, um, and it, it doesn't have to be sexual abuse. There, there are any number of things, you know, the words that a parent puts on you, poverty, um, you know, there's so much stuff that causes us, I think, to feel like victims. And one of the things that I learned throughout the journey 
throughout my own journey and especially the journey with this book is that most people don't choose to be victims they just don't know how to choose victory so even though I was really living out my dreams you know my childhood dreams in my career especially at, at, during the time at NBC I mean I walked into my agent's office four years prior and said I want my own late night show <laughs> and I want to be on a major network and the day my agent called to, to tell me that news he said I think there's only one or two times in my career where I've gotten to call a client and say, you just got exactly what you wanted when you walked in the door. Unheard so, of. <laughs> yeah, right, completely. So even in that big moment of victory, it was the victory inside that I couldn't find. Yeah. And that, you know, that teaches you how powerful the mind is in controlling your choice and your feelings. That's the title of the book, I Choose Victory. It is a choice, isn't it? It is a choice. It's a daily choice, you know? Um, but I think it's like your faith muscle. The more you make the choice, the stronger you get, so that when something throws you off, you kind of can go, eh, no, I'm not believing the lies that the enemy wants to plant in my brain. I'm not a victim. Or I am a victim. This was wrong. I forgive. I let go. I give this to you, God. But as for me, I choose victory, yeah. you know, and, and yeah. What are you doing today? Today, I am still choosing victory. You know, it's been a it's been a crazy year. You know, the, the week I turned in this book, uh, literally the week I turned in this book, my husband got diagnosed with cancer Goodness. and I sort of, I found out that my, my sister and my abuser had stolen our life story and made a film about it called The Banker. <laughs> and so that took me on a very interesting and deep journey because I looked at my husband at one point and I said, this is crazy. I said, after all of this, I turn in this book and I'm feeling like I've never been a bigger victim. You know, all these emotions and stuff were, were coming right back and I had to really utilize the tools in my own book. And she did successfully. Cynthia Garrett, I Choose Victory. It's your opportunity to figure out how to move from victim to victor. Thank you. So great to have you with us.